Michael and Paul live in South Yorkshire with their 16-year-old twin sons, Levi and Lucas. They suffer from various disabilities. And last summer, Levi had a seizure and fell, hitting his head on a door. What I find very difficult is the fact that they left a child with severe autism and all his disabilities just sat there with me waiting to be seen for a very long time. That ambulance call that Michael and Paul made was one of an average of 22 and a half thousand made each day last year. Now, calls are categorised one to four depending on their urgency. Category one is life-threatening when someone isn't breathing, say. Two is emergency, heart attacks, strokes, things like that. Three is classed as urgent and includes things like a fall at home. And four is non-urgent. We can look at a breakdown of what calls are for what, and you can see that here. And there are set targets for ambulances to reach people depending on the category, most of those category two. And as you'll see in a second, regardless of the target, across the board, people are waiting much longer than they should be. For category one calls, the target for an ambulance to reach a patient is seven minutes, that dotted line. You can see what it looked like in 2019. But last year, there was this big increase in that waiting time. Throughout the year, it was an average of eight minutes and 30 seconds. Now remember, this is for patients who may not be breathing. An even bigger increase to an average of 10 minutes 55 towards the end of the year. The ambulances are taking a lot longer to come, like Levi, so they were having a cluster of seizures, so he was in and out of seizure. So they'd say on the phone, um, is he fitting now? And if he'd come out of it, it would get knocked to the back of the list. Over the last few months, we've heard horror stories of ambulance bays turning into car parks. Delays mean patients often have to wait before they even get transferred to A&E. This is what the data tells us for December last year. If four ambulances turned up to accident and emergency, two of them had to wait more than 30 minutes to transfer patients. 25% of ambulances, one in four, had to wait more than an hour. And once patients are in accident and emergency, there's yet another wait. In December, one in three people across all a &Es had to wait more than four hours to be assessed. That's way up on 2019 and far, far above that target of 5%. We got to the hospital at this point. Levi, because of his autism, was really, really unsettled, screaming, throwing himself about. Meanwhile, his head's still pumping with blood. And he's just come out of a seizure as well. And then we just had to wait to be seen. Each of those data points, though, is someone's story, someone's life. Michael and Paul have been in almost constant contact with the NHS since Levi and Lucas were babies. That's 16 years. But they say that right now is the worst things have ever been. Good boy. Tom Cheshire, Sky News, Thurnscope, South Yorkshire.